Welcome to Mana's Seal YouTube channel. The previous video link is on the description box or on the top right card. Volume 12 The Paladin of the Holy Kingdom. Nia could not cast spells, but she had heard this during her lectures. It was difficult to summon multiple beings with summon magic. In other words, when a summon spell was active, casting another summon spell would cause the previous summon spell to end. The currently summoned monsters would go back from whence they came, and new monsters would be summoned in their place. However, people capable of high-tier summoning spells could simultaneously conjure several weaker monsters at once, of the sort that one would evoke with a low-tier summon spell. For instance, one could use a fourth-tier spell to summon multiple monsters that could be invoked by a third-tier spell. I don't understand it all. His method of summoning demons is still a mystery. Well, it felt like he was summoning them with spells, he couldn't have summoned multiple demons of such power, but if he could, that would beg the question of why he did not do so in the kingdom. Perhaps if he were a magic caster who specializes in summoning, he could simultaneously summon multiple copies of such a creature. So even if we defeated the scaly demons, Jeldabaeth could immediately resummon it. Just so. However, that refers to the situation where Jeldabaeth conjures them with magic. If he used some kind of special ability to do it, that would be another matter entirely. So you don't know much about that side of things. Sorry, but I don't. We know very little about him. Evil Eye sounded clearly disheartened. Em, I didn't get any of that at all, you know. I'll explain it to you later, Captain. No, start clarifying now. I haven't been able to keep up since just now. This is our Captain, the person in charge of all of us. That being the case, was that disgusting insect made one of Jaldabaoth's summons too? I don't know. I don't want to think that way. Blue Rose's members began discussing among themselves. Erm, um, may I ask a question? Everyone turned to look at Nia after she nervously spoke up, and the tremendous pressure made her regret doing so. Perhaps it might be better for someone other than her to bring this up. However, the die had been cast, and after firming up her resolve, she asked. This might be a very basic question, but where did Jaldabaoth come from? Was the name of Jaldabaoth passed down from earlier days? That is unclear. We've studied all sorts of literature, but we haven't been able to find that name in any of them. We've also tried looking for clues based on his appearance, but similarly, we haven't been able to make any headway either. Could it be an alias? Maybe he caused trouble under a different name in the past. I doubt that. To demons, this applies to angels as well, their names are a very important part of their very being. If a demon wants to show up, it has to engrave its name into the world. Therefore, they can't use false names. Experiments show that using a false name might even cause them to disappear on the spot. Nia knew next to nothing about demons and angels, but if an adamantite rank magic caster said so, then, that ought to be the case. As for his origins, if he came from the other side of the continent, then it's only natural that there'd be no information about him, but after thinking so much, every possibility seems equally likely, and so there's no telling where to begin. Evil Eye shrugged. Say, what if you got Jaldabaoth's appearance wrong? Was the Jaldabaoth you looked into the Jaldabaoth in the picture? What if that appearance of his was a deception? Ho, oh, Evil Eye leaned over the table towards Remedios. Can you go into more detail? We managed to press Jaldabaoth in that form quite badly, and then he revealed his true form. Remedios closed her eyes. It was another defeat for us. Can you be more specific? Telling them that much should be fine, right, Gustavo? Yes, no objections here. If we could learn more about him from his appearance, hiding that information would be harmful instead. Well, I feel a full disclosure would be better. Remedios began muttering and grumbling, and then she told Eve lie about Jaldabaoth's appearance. Halfway through, Remedios' face twisted in anger. She had probably recalled the battle that nobody here knew anything about. I see, then we'll continue our investigations based on what we have just learned. We'll keep you informed with our findings, so could you tell us if you wish to stay in the city? We haven't decided that yet. In any case, does that mean you do not know anything about that form of his? Lacus, do you remember? Lacus shook her head. That's how it is. Sorry. I understand. Then, after we make our decision, we will contact you immediately. But in that case, we'll have to consider the worst case scenario, the possibility that his appearance in the kingdom was intended to create a false impression, so he deliberately refrained from showing his true power. In other words, our country was Jaldabaoth's true objective, and that he had some other plan for the kingdom. Perhaps. If the kingdom was his main priority, he would have shown his true form like he did in the Holy Kingdom, no. Or was it because he was startled by moment Sama's strength, and chose to protect his true identity, rather than let his plan be ruined? I really don't want to think that's the case. 
Eve Lai's words left the room in a gloomy silence, so profound that even the faint sounds of breathing seemed very loud. Who would speak first? In this tense atmosphere, Lacius proved her bravery. Now then, let me say again, we're in the same boat as you. We want to know more about Jeldabiev. Frankly speaking, everything we've learned is basically analysis from our encounter with him. We have no inkling of Jeldabiev's aims, true identity, or abilities. Maybe we could summon demons to learn about Jeldabiev. But that will stain the soul. And even if we summon low-ranking demons, it's quite likely that they won't know anything about high-ranking demons. In that case, we'll need to contact a summoning adept. Unfortunately, we don't know anyone who's good at summoning demons. Evil Eye had been the first one to supplement Lacus's words, followed by one of the twins. Surely nobody would, at least not under usual circumstances. Me amused. Diabolists were typically evil beings, and fortunately very few of them were powerful in their own right. That was because most of the time, they either destroyed themselves or they were slain by death squads. Of course, there might be some experts in the field who had submersed themselves into the darkness, but they typically hid themselves and did not make friends. Still, just waiting there to die is very frustrating. The next time that monster comes to the kingdom, I want to make him weep with my own two hands. In order to do that, I need to learn as much as I can about him. Also, he was not leading any Demihumans in the kingdom. If he recruited the Demihumans due to his failure in the kingdom, then we'll need to be even more wary of him. Those words were spoken by Gagarin, and then the other twin. Is that why you wanted to know what we knew? Everyone in Blue Rose nodded. Lacus summed up for them. We'll pay some equal to the fees we'd receive for a similar request. Captain. May I handle the upcoming negotiations? Remedios immediately agreed with Gustavo's question. In place of money, we would like some other form of payment. What is it? Well we would like to meet your wishes, we can't do everything. However, if you want to make contact with powerful nobles, that could be arranged. Is that so? Thank you very much. However, we were not thinking of that, could you come to our country, and fight alongside us? The room was silent once more. It lasted several seconds, no, perhaps it was longer. The next sound they heard was that of Lacus leaning on her chair. I am very sorry, but we cannot offer that form of payment. We're gathering intelligence because we don't want to die. Doing that would be counter to our purposes. Evil Eye shrugged, as if to say there was nothing that could be done about it. We won't ask you to fight Jaldabiev. All you need to do is wait in the rear and help with healing magic. You don't have the luxury of doing that. Gagarin's words left them speechless. She was correct. The northern half of the Holy Kingdom was now subjugated by Jaldabiev's beastmen, and all they could do was mount a feeble resistance. Many of the people had been incarcerated in camps, and the surviving paladins were hidden in caves as defeated soldiers. No, that's not the case. We stopped the Demihuman advance in the nick of time. They still held the south, where the army and Jaldabiev's forces were staring each other down, so saying that they were at the edge of extinction might be accurate. To Nia, who knew what was going on, Gustavo's words sounded more like lies than the truth. Can you come, in that case? I refuse. Remedio sat up to ask her question, and Eve Lai flatly rejected it. Given the way everyone in Blue Rose remained silent, she was most definitely not alone in her opinion. They must have all felt the same way. Frankly speaking, we might have stopped them in the nick of time, but we're also at the end of our rope. The Holy Kingdom is in ruins, but the southern troops are still intact. However, they alone won't be enough to beat Jeldabiev. Gustavo poured a glass of water for himself, drank from it, and then continued. The reason why we haven't been completely conquered yet is because the navy has been pinning down Jeldabiev's army on the northern coastline and holding them off. If Jeldabiev manages to figure out some way to deal with that and advances his troops to the south, they wouldn't be able to offer the slightest bit of resistance. However, that was the thinking of a man from the north who knew Jeldabiev's power. The people of the south would probably have different plans. For instance, driving off Jeldabiev with their own might. Well part of the reason for that was because they had not shared their intelligence, it was also due to the long-standing feud between the north and the south. From the start, many of the nobles in the south had always protested the fact that a woman, skipping ahead of her elder brother, was to be crowned as Holy Queen for the first time in history. For that reason, in order to avoid a rift between the north and the south, the former Holy Queen ignored even such baseless allegations, as the Holy Queen assumed her position, because she had something going on with the temples, and she was secretly assisted by Quirrell Custodio. After that, the South did not escalate matters any further, and thus a full-scale confrontation was averted, but that was only because the North and South had been in a balance of power. Now that the North was in ruins, the South no longer had any reason to hold themselves back anymore. Thus, the South began snubbing the North now. Even in the face of Jaldabiath's invasion, the humans still bore grudges against each other. Nia simply found that laughable. 
In addition, there were whispers of a power struggle for the position of the next holy king, and it only served to make Nia, a commoner, even more unhappy. That's quite bad. Indeed. The navy has very few assets which can do battle against flying demons, and their battles have taken a terrible toll on them. If this keeps up, they won't be able to hold off Jaldabaoth's army forever. We need strength to overcome this situation. Please, I beg you, lend your strength to us. All we need is a month or two. We can pay anything you want. I beg you, please save the Holy Kingdom. As Gustavo bowed his head to them, Nia and the other paladins went please. And bowed as well. The room was silent once more, and then Lachius's voice spread through it. Please, raise your heads. And, I am very sorry, but we cannot go to the Holy Kingdom. Why? Nia jerked her head up at the sudden shout from Remedios. She saw Remedios had risen from her seat and was glaring at Lachius. There's no way Jaldabaoth will stop at conquering the Holy Kingdom. He'll gather his strength there and then invade the kingdom, you know. If you don't beat him now, he'll become even stronger in future. You are correct. The possibility of that is very high. Since you understand, why aren't you helping us? And it's not just you, it's also the nobles of this country, of our country. None of you get it. Isn't now the time to come together and fight as one? The reason why this country's nobles won't lend you their strength is slightly different from our own. What do you know about the Sorcerer's Kingdom? It was a frightening place ruled by the undead, a city taken from the kingdom and used as the heart of a nation. That was all the average citizen of the Holy Kingdom knew about it. As Remedios said as much, Lachis smiled bitterly to her. That's true, and it's largely accurate, but it's wrong in some places. While the undead are everywhere, the humans there live safe and peaceful lives. A. Eh? In a country founded by the undead, who hate the living. There are many kinds of undead, and the Sorcerer King is a ruler of the undead. Ordering the undead under his command not to harm human beings and enforcing that order is a simple matter for him. Evil Eye made a noise of disapproval. Evil Eye. <laughs> anyway, we still have a sorcerer's kingdom before our eyes to deal with, so it's hard for them to aid your country. Also, a lot of people perish during the battle with the sorcerer's kingdom, which will have grave consequences in the future. The nobles who appear so well off are hardly as well to do as you might think. Even so, isn't Jaldabi at the problem that should be taken care of as soon as possible? The fact is, countless people are suffering because of Jaldabaoth. And the sorceress whatever hasn't harmed anyone, has he? Fighting on two fronts at once while you're exhausted is very dangerous. I trust I don't need to tell you that, right? Remedios shut her mouth. Also, it's the same with us. Two of them were killed in combat with Jaldabaoth, and while they were resurrected from the dead, they still have not regained their full strength yet. If we invade Jaldabaoth's territory in this state, we might all end up being killed. Didn't Gustavo say that you wouldn't need to fight Jaldabaoth? What the heck? She actually believed that. Tia. Excuse me. Ahem. I'm very sorry, but I don't think things will turn out as you imagine. So long as it involves the risk of facing Jaldabaoth, we will refuse this job. We need to become stronger than we are now in order to prepare for the future. This is just a hypothesis, but we need to get ready in case Jaldabaoth decides to attack the kingdom once more. The faces of every member of Blue Rose were unmoved. It would seem they could not be swayed. Soon, Remedios managed to squeeze a few words out. Then, who else is there who can save our country? Blue Rose's members looked at each other. There's only one person. Evelai replied. Or rather, he's the person you should have gone to in the first place, no. Who's that? Momon Sama, of course. The Momon Sama who beat off Jaldabaoth. Oh, did he? A moment, Captain Custodio. If I'm not wrong, he's... You've heard, haven't you? Yes, Momon Sama is now in the Sorcerer's Kingdom and is one of the Sorcerer King's subordinates. Therefore, you will most likely have to convince the Sorcerer King to help you. Ja. Remedios grunted bitterly. Nia understood how she felt. Any citizen of the Holy Kingdom would have very complex feelings about asking anything of the undead. Considering she, as a squire, felt that way, how much worse would it be for the captain of an order of paladins, who bore a holy sword? However, Remedios looked forcefully at the members of Blue Rose. If that is the best way to defeat Jaldabaoth, then let's do it. No, that's all we can do. If we can, we'll pin our hopes to that moment. I believe it's Momon Sama, Captain. Er, yes. Can you please write a letter introducing us to Momon Sama?